It's time for another season of The Palmetto Porch, an original podcast from Discover South Carolina. I'm Devin Whitmire. Join me as I get to the heart of what makes South Carolina such a great place to visit by speaking to the locals who make it so special. Premiering December 5th, find The Palmetto Porch wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information about our show, visit scpalmettoporch.com. Hey, did you catch Squid Games? I don't know if you have. It's like Hunger Games, but these games are set in Korea. Let me tell you something. I actually watched the whole thing, and there's a real twist at the end. I'm not going to be a spoiler and tell you what it is. But anyway, so, so many people are watching Squid Games. About 144 million people have on Netflix, and they say that Squid Dream searches are up by 1,800%, says this website each night. Now, Squid Nightmares are up almost 5,000%. Okay, granted, until October, nobody in the entire world had anything called a Squid Nightmare. Some people are hopping online saying, I'm having Squid Nightmares, oh my gosh. Okay, well, I had one. Yes, I did. That a bunch of squids, they they all got together in China and they were coming after us here in the United States, specifically in California. And they formed a Cali army, like calamari, Cali. Oh, I know. If you have, hungry. <laughs> if you have to explain it, it's just not a good joke. I know. Anyway, hey, welcome to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun show about everything digital. I'm Kim Commando, and joining us this week, as always, it's our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. Hello there, Allie. Hello. And, of course, we have our trusty news director and our bona fide geek of the week, yes, Ben Bradley. Hey, Kim. And then, of course, our millennial Matthew. Yes, our internet scout who tells us what we need to do and talk about on the internet so that we are hip, which, yes, right, Matt? Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm going to keep you hip. <laughs> you know what? If you have to say that you're hip, you're, you're not hip, right? <laughs> I don't think we use the word hip anymore in the first place. So. <laughs> okay, so, so what do you say? If somebody uh, wants to say sick. Oh, yeah, you're <laughs> sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? Yes, yeah, sick. Um, how about, you know, cringeworthy? Oh, yeah, on <laughs> fleek. I don't, I'm not, I, that might be a little bit older now, but yeah. Yes, on fleek, yes. Okay, when you're, we always want to be on fleek. We want to remind you to rate, review, subscribe, and follow the podcast because that helps more people find us. And always say a few kind, good words, yes. And Tech Refresh has been brought to you by thecurrentnewsletter.com. Tech news and tips you can use right now every single day. And there's no ads. It's free. You can see a sample and sign up right now. Do it while you're thinking about it. Head over to thecurrentnewsletter.com. Yes, I say it that way because this way you know. I'm not just saying the current newsletter. I'm saying you have to go to the website. T-H-E. Yes, thecurrentnewsletter.com. All right, we got a lot of tech news and tips to cover in this podcast, along with some great tips you can use to score deals when holiday shopping. But first, the news. And we start with Allie. Hi there, Al. Hi. All right, not long ago, I told you all about how your phone's operating system and all the pre-installed apps are tracking you and you can't do anything about it. That was for Android. Today, I have some bad news for my pals with iPhones, which I think is all of you. Mm, Uh Uh-oh. Yes, I know. Okay, first, a little tech lesson. When you take a photo with your smartphone, there are all these data points embedded in it. Where the photo was taken, what time, what device you have, even the settings in your camera, it's called EXIF data. Okay, when you post a photo to, say, Twitter, It pulls out all that data, it goes away, nobody could get it, awesome. Well, when you post to Facebook, yeah, you guessed it, no, Uh, it keeps all that data. Does it? That is so sad. Are we surprised, anybody? Mm, No, no. Crickets, we are not surprised. Yeah, (laughs) even if you tell Facebook, never ever track my location, it still has a way to do it. The only way that you can stop this one, obviously, is to not upload photos to Facebook anymore. So make that choice for yourself. Get this. Here's another one that, again, should not be surprising, but also makes you just shake your head. Facebook also tracks your movement through your phone's accelerometer. So that's what tracks motion in your phone. Um, It makes your compass work. It also works for things like, you know, maybe you have an app where you shake it to do something. That's your accelerometer. Facebook reads that data too. So even if you don't allow location data there, they can infer your exact location by the vibration Mm. patterns in your phone records. You know, wow, that, you know what, that's just nasty. That is ridiculous. And I mean, if, you know, if this is happening on your iPhone and Facebook's doing this, they ought to 
FaceTime. I mean, just for that. <laughs> Uh, while we're feeling all warm and fuzzy about tracking, there's one more place, Bluetooth devices. Now, typically Bluetooth randomizes network addresses, so you can't really connect, say, my headphones to my phone. But researchers at the UC San Diego just found out that it's actually not too hard to get around this, and it's especially bad, yes, for iPhones, because the Bluetooth is so strong. Um, that's why your Find My iPhone and AirDrop work so well, because of that strong Bluetooth. And yeah, another way to get your location data. You know what, Allie, I'm feeling like you are just like trying to like hurt me and and Ben and Matt that you're like saying like, OK, it's either, you know, my way or the Huawei, like I always <laughs> like to say. But, you know, you may say that about us iPhone users, but, you know, China is getting every single thing that you do on your phone. I mean, take it, China. What do I care? No, <laughs> seriously. Um, I, I think. Wow. This, Heard it here this, first. <laughs> this kind of reminds me what I said about the Google's response, basically, about, you know, their the operating systems are tracking everything. Yeah, it's kind of just how modern smartphones work. So it's a bummer when we see these ones where there's really nothing you can do about it aside from, I don't know, don't use a smartphone. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to happen. All right, Ben. Thank you, Allie. So, Ben, what's on your news agenda? Well, staying with tech that's always with you, you know, think about Alexa. It's in your living room, the kitchen, the car, the bedroom, everywhere. And, you know, you've got that whole command center they want for your wall and the robot that follows you around. Well, now Amazon is rolling out this whole program where Alexa is going to be in your hospital room or at your in, at your room in the retirement home. All these healthcare facilities and retirement communities, they just open the door for any of these agencies who want them to basically apply. They'd actually been working on it for a few years, but it really kicked, you know, really got traction during the pandemic because you had all these hospitals that didn't have the PPE. So they asked Amazon, so Amazon says that, hey, can we can you find us a way that we can have conversations with patients without having to be in the same room? So you have the drop in, you know, on the speakers or on the show. And it kind of blew up from there. So now this week, they said, hey, it's open for everyone, all these facilities through this Alexa smart properties. That means they can set up like custom ways to use Alexa. So at a hospital, they can reach out to a nurse at the nurse's station questions. They can keep in touch with the family. The patients can change the TV channel. From the you, room. you know, it's actually pretty smart. I mean, it's actually a great idea. I mean, you know, Amazon is taking over the world. We know that. But mm -hmm. I'm sure all of us have been in a hospital. If you've visited somebody in a hospital, you know, you have the call button. And so you sit there and you press the call button and you press the call button. And then you, okay, and then you're like me and you're like, hold on, I'll be right back. And then you go to the nurse's <laughs> station and say, okay, maybe you were busy, um, but I pressed the call button seven times in the last hour. And I think I need some help right now, you know, in, with some uh, family member. So if I could just say, Alexa, get me a nurse or a doctor or help, I think that would be incredible for a patient in the bed. As long as it works like it's supposed to, you know, going Sorry, to... Sorry, I don't know that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you know, Alexa takes over the world, do you think it will be kind to humans? No, no, <laughs> not with the way everyone treats her. <laughs> you know, I forget which channel I was watching the other day and the news was on and they were interviewing this woman. It was so funny. They were interviewing this woman who's 103 years old. And I looked at her and I thought, you know, when I'm 103, I want to be like her. I mean, because she was like they were showing her like touching your toes and doing all kinds of things and how she really has this like healthy lifestyle. She has like one shot of whiskey every single day. And you know, <laughs> so she goes through the whole thing. But the best part of the interview was, and they said, you know, uh, the reporter asked her, what's the best thing about being 103 years old? And without flinching, this woman looked at the camera and said, it's easy. No peer pressure. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's excellent. That's a dark one. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a little rough. All right, I'm going to go back to Facebook because it's no longer any question that Congress is going to take action against Facebook and about all these algorithms. And we have to talk about algorithms for just a second because I think when the average Joe and Jane, they hear algorithm, they think like, oh, 
this must be artificial intelligence. This must be something that's thinking on its own. No, you have to program the algorithms. The algorithms is just a computer program that does predictive analysis, predictive behavior. Okay, and it has to be programmed by a person. Okay, so five years ago, there was really only a couple of ways you could respond to a post on Facebook. You know, you could like it, you could give it a thumbs down or whatever it may be. Well, they added love, laugh, wow, sad, and anger. Okay, so they added those five, five years ago. Now, what they found is really fascinating, that Facebook's engineers discovered that whatever made people angry also led them to use Facebook more because they were responding and trying to do things with that post, which when they were on Facebook more, guess what? They made more money, increased revenues. Okay, so then they also discovered that whatever angered people, what was it? Fake news, misinformation, lies. So what Facebook did is that they pushed those posts higher and more often in people's news feeds to promote what? Yes, more anger. So you have this hatred and public distrust with Facebook. It has just soared since all the whistleblowing things that have been going on. And now we're learning that the full story of Facebook's involvement in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. But there's still a major unanswered question. I mean, why are we so angry at everything that's on Facebook and not anger and not angry at Facebook, right? I mean, what is going on here? And should the government break them up? That's another question. I was on the air this morning on WLS 890 AM in Chicago, and we were talking about that. But what about the kids? Okay, there's no question that Zuck and the gang knew that Instagram was harming the kids. No question whatsoever. Now, they say that they didn't know that the kids were under 13 years old. Because you know that. If you want to sign in, what do you do? You say, oh, I'm like 13, even though you're seven or eight. And everybody knows that. Well, Get this, this company in the UK has just announced some new technology, it's a startup, that by using your device's camera, they can predict with like a 99.9% .9 accuracy how old that child is. Wow. Isn't that fascinating? So when the kid goes to sign in, it will go like, no, we're sorry, you're not old enough. Okay, so the question now is, how can a small little company in the UK <laughs> develop this technology and not these big social media companies? Why didn't they say, hey, we ought to be able to authentic? Because of what? The money, right? The I money. I was going to say, th they know if I bought Lifesavers at a Circle K three days ago, but they don't know if it's a 13 year old kid. I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, but that's their whole scapegoat going, like, well, you know what? The parents should be watching. The parents should be watching. Well, I'm going to tell you more about that in some other show, but let's move on. Okay, this was an amazing story. I love this story. And then we'll get to some tips. Um, real quickly, there's this hiker who got lost in Colorado. And he's like hiking, hiking, hiking. His family can't find him. And and then he figures out that, well, I'm just going to sleep here overnight. And then I'm going to try to figure out how to get back. Okay, but meanwhile, his whole family's like, where the heck is this guy? You know, he should have been home by now. So the Lake County Search and Rescue, SAR, they went out and they were trying to find him on this Mount Albert and they were sent to different areas and uh, they didn't know where he was. And so somebody thought like, hey, you know, why don't we try to call a guy? So they call the guy's cell phone. They call it again. They call it again. Call again. They call it multiple times and he doesn't answer the phone. So now everybody's like really worried about him because he's not answering the phone and even the location tracking is. So they finally get the guy and they say, you know what, did you not understand or you didn't hear the phone ring or what? He goes, you know, I looked down and I didn't want to answer it because it was an unknown phone number. I thought it was a telemarketer. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Now, here's this guy's train of thought, right? Work with me on this. I'm lost in the mountains. It's cold. It might snow. I can't find my way back to my car, but I don't want to take the risk of talking to a telemarketer. <laughs> even if they could help. Yeah. Even if it was a telemarketer who could help. I don't I want to sell my home, but please rescue me from this yeah. mountain. I mean, but seriously, I mean, you think about it. I mean, his car warranty could have been in jeopardy. I mean, and he oh. <laughs> They could have helped didn't. him with the student loans. <laughs> no, what's this guy thinking? 
All right, stay right where you are because coming up, we have some insider secrets and party tricks with your tech year. You don't want to miss some tech tips. And of course, first, we have to say a few thank yous to our partners in this podcast because they help pay the bill. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. You know, it's your weekly show, fun show about all things digital. And it's time now where we talk about some uh, party tricks for your tech year. And if you're not getting our other podcasts, I'm talking about our daily tech update and our digital life hack, wherever you get your podcasts, where I'm sure you're going to rate, review, subscribe, and follow us. Make sure that you also uh, subscribe to the daily tech update and the daily life hack. It comes with the daily tech update, as a matter of fact. So just search for Commando wherever you get your podcasts. And, you know, we're going to be talking a little bit about Christmas and the holidays because it seems like every year the holidays start earlier and earlier, but legit, it's totally happening this year, right? Oh, yeah. I was at Target the other day and they have completely cleared out the Halloween section. It was all Christmas and I just felt like, I'm not ready. Yes. Well, it's, you know, the chip shortages and the supply chain issues. And so what I was thinking is like maybe some good Christmas gifts, holiday gifts this year, are really when you're going to take a good photo and you're going to want to print it. Right. And then you find a good frame and you slap it in there. And so whether you're given photo gifts this year, you're printing them out, doing it on photo paper, when you want to print or scan photos, we'll talk about it in just a second. We always talk about DPI. Anybody, anybody in the crowd, DPI, Matt, mm -hmm. what does DPI yeah. stand for? Is it dots per inch? <gasps> yes. Like ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. Yes, yeah. you go to the bonus round. Okay, and here's the deal, though. When images are on the web, the DPI can work against you. So you might be thinking, like a lot of people, oh, the higher the DPA, the better, right? Well, kind of depends. When you're printing a photo, 300 DPI will give you a really decent, nice, glossy, standard size photo. Now, if you're going to be scanning, you want to pump up that DPI to at least 600. You can go higher, 1200, but really the file's just gonna be really big, take more storage space, longer to open. So about the web, if that photo is only going to be shown on a website, the DPI's little fun fact, little Jeopardy question for you, uh, the DPI should be 72. Why so low in limbo land? Well, you want the pictures, you want the pages, pardon me, to load quickly. And to find an images DPI in Windows, you just look at the images properties. And on a Mac, you're going to want to use preview. So um, have any of you printed out your photos to put in frames? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Not in years. <laughs> I let yeah. services do it for me. It's a lot easier, isn't it? And, you know, yeah. and now you can get them printed on metal and all kinds of really cool things. Oh. Yeah, really canvases, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty expensive, though when you start getting into some of those things. And um, I will tell you that I have tried Costco because you know I'm frugal at heart. Um, yeah, I'm cheap. And so the quality at Costco on some of the prints, I don't know, it's just, it's cheap, but it's not the best. It's, I think you're better off going to like Shutterfly or MPix or something like that. All right, Ben, so you're going to talk to us now about Amazon's trade-in program. Yeah, coming back to Amazon. So one of the things... I didn't even know about for a while is that if you have just random gadgets, electronics, you don't use anymore, and they're just taking up space, they might be eligible for Amazon's trade-in program. It doesn't even have to be made by Amazon. So it can be, you know, it can be Amazon devices. It can be smartphones. It can be tablets, uh, streaming players, routers, all kinds of stuff. And if it's eligible, uh, Amazon will give you a gift card and depending on what it is, give you in addition, a discount 
on a newer version of something you're trading in. So I actually tried it out for the first time a few weeks ago. Somehow, I still had a first generation Echo Show, the big two. Ooh. It worked. That doesn't surprise me. Does that surprise anybody here? I mean, are we supposed to be shocked that you have a the first generation Echo? I mean, I, I mean, no. We're like yeah. all looking at you, like really. I mean, we're kind of surprised you didn't have like the earlier generation. It's the really prototype, yeah. <laughs> the zero generation. <laughs> yeah, this thing's like six or seven years old, but it worked. I just it was in a place where we didn't use it. And I had uh, an Echo Show Five, one of those little ones we had in the kitchen. Didn't really need that after we the whole new fridge adventure that has Alexa already built in. So went to the site, started the trade-in process, answered a few questions. You have to tell them about the condition, if it still works. They offered me 25 bucks for that first generation Echo, Ooh. which is more than I thought hmm. I would get. I and then why. only 20 for the Echo Show 5. But Really? Yeah. Okay. Was, and why, what, kind of, was, what kind of coupon do you get? 25% off of another Echo. So and that's Ooh. that's what's kind of cool. So and don't forget to erase everything because you do that. You mail it off. They <laughs> check it out, make sure you weren't lying, and then they apply this stuff to your account. Well, the Echo Show Eight, the new one, the second generation, it's usually 130 bucks. When I was looking, it just happened to be on sale for 100. Apply the 25 percent off to that, 75, then the 45 in credit. It was 30 bucks. Whoa! Ooh, nice. That's good. All right. So you know that's a pretty good deal. So if you have any old tech laying around, what I like about it is that even if it doesn't work right just go ahead and go to amazon's trade-in program you can find it just go to amazon.com and search for trade-in all right Allie, what do you have for us today well i've got a little tip for all of you turkeys so turkeys are going to be hard to find this thanksgiving especially in certain sizes because lots of people are having smaller get-togethers so those medium-sized turkeys kind of in the i don't up to like 14 pounds or so especially that 10 to 12 pound range is going to be really popular now, people are predicting that they are going to sell out, which they will, or that they're just going to be really expensive. So if you normally just wait until they come to your grocery store and hope for the best, you probably want to do a little pre-planning this year. And maybe this is a good year to try out a higher quality turkey. So I have been scouring the internet for what is a really good organic, you know, all the adjectives, pasture raised and I don't know, fed golden whatever turkeys eat. <laughs> anyway, so I found they a just, few good ones. You know what? The turkeys that were allowed to just prance around in the fields and the forest until that very last moment, exactly. right? Exactly. They get their feathers mm -hmm. cleaned every day, whatever. Okay. One company is called Organic Prairie, and wouldn't you know it, they are already sold out of medium turkeys. They only have large ones. They're $125. Yes, when I said expensive turkeys, I was not joking. There is a company called D'Artagnan, which is really popular for its organic turkeys. They have got 10 to 12 pounders for good deal, maybe $87.50. They are hybrid turkeys, humanely raised, free range, all the good stuff. There's a company called Distol. They do, again, organic whole turkeys. You can get them shipped to you. These are nice because you're not going to have to go to the store and fight somebody over a frozen bird. You're just going to get a nice high quality one right to your house. Their medium turkeys are about a hundred bucks. Again, if you want a turkey in general, but especially one of these nicer turkeys, order in advance. Uh, we've got the links on commando.com um, right to these companies if you want to find them. But I would definitely uh, say don't wait this year. Figure it out ahead of time or... I don't know, you're going to be eating chicken for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hot dogs. <laughs> um, you know, I'll tell you, I have certain members of my family, which I, everybody does, like, you know, it, they're having tough times, right? And so one family member in particular, like, you know, once every three months is that I'll send them some uh, prepackaged foods or, you know, whatever it may be. So this way I fill up their refrigerator and their freezer. And so, you know, turkey's coming around. Thanksgiving's coming around. So I went over to Costco.com to see, like, I wonder what they're doing. And so they have, I'm just telling you, pass this along, is that they have a Swan's, you know, the food company. They're selling a Swan's turkey package. You get, like, turkey, uh, cornbread, a couple of sides, um, dessert. Oh, there's, like, two pie. You get an apple pie and a pumpkin pie. It's enough to serve eight to ten people. And so you get everything. It's $99. Wow. And cents. I well, mean, that's yeah, quite that's a deal. Good. Exactly. And I thought, wow, that is really something. Um, all right. So now it's time to play 
fake news, you choose, or you choose the fake news. This is our tech refresh game show sensation because we all are familiar with fake news. And of course we all know like, oh, I can look at that and I can tell that's fake, you know, even before you go Google search it. Well, that's where we came up with this game show so that you're gonna be hearing about three news stories and it's up to you to decide which is the fake. That's right, two are real, one is fake. Sometimes, you know, I get it confused. I'm like, two are fake, one's real. No, uh, this is what it is. It's two are real and one fake news story. And here to stump all of us today, and Matthew, you and I are gonna be going against Ben this week just to make things, mix it oh, up good. just a little bit. All right, <laughs> Allie, so take it away. All right, story number one, prepare an NFT option coming to Photoshop. Now we talk about cryptocurrency and NFT scams all the time because it's a pretty easy way for criminals to make a buck now. Adobe wants to combat one part of the problem, people claiming that they created art to sell that they didn't and making a ton of money off of it. So Adobe is adding a way for NFT collectors, NFT non-fungible tokens, to verify that the art that they are buying online was actually made by the person who's selling it. They're calling it content credentials. And theoretically, it should allow a lot of the NFT creators who choose to remain anonymous to stay anonymous. They can link back to their real identity online or their crypto identity. Now, let me tell you, this thing about NFTs is really fascinating to me. I was talking to um, this guy over at Morgan Stanley, and we were talking about investments and everything. And he asked me, like, I don't really understand what an NFT is. Now, let me tell you about Bob. Bob went to Harvard. He went to Georgetown. He went to Wharton. He teaches finance sometimes at like UC Berkeley. I mean, so, you know, he's a pretty smart guy. So I was explaining to him like about the metaverse. And so let's say, you know, five years from now, there's a metaverse and you are in your little house, a virtual house and you wanna invite your friends over. And so on your wall is the NFT of LeBron James getting that great shot, okay? You know, so NFTs, a lot of people don't understand like what they're for now. It's like, oh, I guess I own, I don't know, a car or something <laughs> or, it's Something right? that I've seen that I, I think is a really good way for people to understand it if they don't know anything about this is, you know, there are things that we have in real life that we use to show off. Maybe you have a Lamborghini or a really fancy watch or something with a lot of status, right? Even a purse. And these are kind of the status symbols of the online world. So if your profile picture is some, you know, NFT punk that somebody sold for millions of dollars, yeah, that is a sign to the world on the internet. Hey, this is my status. Hmm. And so, Matt, how would you say that as a millennial? And not this is my status. Uh, um, Check out I'm, the drip I'm, I'm, on this account. I'm, yeah, I'm balling over here with this. <laughs> oh, yeah, balling. I'm balling over here. <laughs> Check out my fit that I am having my pick. All right, story number two, Al. Number two, man's money-saving Walmart hack was actually a pre-holiday sale mistake. All right, we know that if you're trying to make something go viral, you probably can't. But a good way to maybe give yourself a good shot at it is to show people how to save some money. That is what Bill Lang did. He is not a TikTok star. He's not trying to be famous online. He's just a regular guy. He was shopping on walmart.com and just to try it, he entered Black Friday in the promo code box. And wouldn't you know it, Ooh. it worked. He got 30% off his entire order. Naturally, he took to Facebook, he made a post. Tens of thousands of shares later, Bill reported back. A couple hours later, the code was not working anymore, but he did have a message from Walmart. He had accidentally found a shopping code for a holiday promo that they never meant to put on the live site. For his eagle eyes, they gave him a $500 gift card and he got 30% off his order. <laughs> nice. All right. And story number three, Al. A DoorDash driver receives a delivery request from 700 miles away. Now, this is a hard time to be someone who delivers, right? People have crazy orders, really high expectations. Well, a DoorDash driver in Ohio went on TikTok after he received a delivery order from someone in Rhode Island, about 740 miles away. He said, if you live in Rhode Island and you just ordered, go to Vari off Dora DoorDash, make a sandwich. You are not getting your food. Now, it's not really clear why this person was able to make the order. Seems it was some kind of glitch in DoorDash because, yeah, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. But still, the whole thing racked up 
tens of thousands of views for this guy. Okay. Oh, this is a tough one. So we have the NFT story, number one. Two is the Walmart mm -hmm. discount code. And three is the 700-mile DoorDash order. So I think we should let Ben go first. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, here's my thinking. Man, this stuff's... <laughs> It's good, Allie. Very believable. And if you made up some of those details and a couple of those, you know, kudos. But <laughs> one thing stuck out to me. I'm going to go with the NFT um, verification, everything, Photoshop. I'm going to say that's real. And I'm going to say the DoorDash is also real. And Ooh. I'm going to say that the Walmart thing is fake. And here's why. I'm not saying that, you know, they're not going to goof up and have a a code work on the site when it shouldn't. But if I'm, you know, if I know Walmart, I would think that like, if that happened, they would like cancel everyone's order who used it. And, you know, you can't do that. And, and you know, wouldn't have given, given this kind of thing. So maybe not, mm. but that's one I'm going to go with. as being he's, he's going with number two, Matt. What do you think? He is, he, he's banking on Walmart's greed, which is not a bad thing to bank on. Not going to lie. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, but I'm I'm thinking that the NFT thing is real. I know yes, that there's, it is. There's more I know regulations. That's real. Okay, um, and I'm going to guess that the Walmart thing is real because they're always looking for ways to. If he already shared it and it got a lot of traction, then they know that if they do something nice, it's only going to be good promotion for their brand. So I feel like Walmart might do that just for the promotion. So I'm gonna go with the DoorDash one as the false. Yeah, you know the DoorDash one is kind of tough. Is is tough, because let me tell you, every time that I go into DoorDash, because you know I've got a house in California, a house here, and sometimes it's like I look at it, it's like, oh, you're too far. Are you sure <laughs> this is what you want to order? And I'm like, oh, you're right. I don't want sushi from Coyoto in Santa Barbara when I'm in Phoenix. That just <laughs> would be really bad for dinner, right? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go. So Matt, I'm gonna join you. In okay. number three. Okay, so so Matt and I, Allie, are going with uh, number three. And don't, 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 you know, disregard that I just, you know, happen to be, you know, the boss and my name is on the building. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and Matt just happens to make sure that all the newsletters always go out on time and make sure that they always look fabulous and does all the data crunching that you ever ask him to do expertly. Right, Matt? And promptly. That's very true. Yes. Yeah, so, so you just have, and then, you know, and then there's Ben. Okay. Yeah. Ben. <laughs> okay. So there's Ben. Period. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, drum roll, please. Again, this is a like low budget production. So here I will do the drum roll. Or you know what? I think we should let Matt, because you're our newest friend oh. here. You can. Uh, you get to do the drum roll. I'm trying to do it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. I'll. You know what? Forget it. You know. This I, is okay. Here I'll do I it. Mean, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to take over at this point, Matt. Okay. You ready? Okay. Thank you. I did my best. All right, okay. the fake story is the Walmart hack. That was not oh, real. Oh, dang it. <laughs> well me. done. I'm bowing. Uh, well geez. done, Ben. Yeah, the DoorDash uh, thing was real. It seems like it was some kind of glitch. People thought maybe it was letting him put in an order for a place that he'd been before. Um, yeah, the Walmart thing is fake. The NFT thing is real, and that's pretty darn cool. And yeah. you can definitely feel kind of older you know, companies that have been around forever and aren't really in this new Web3 space saying, okay, we got to do something. We, we have to get here. This. Yeah. Oh, this is, this was a tough one. You know what? You did, you did a great job. You really thank you, did. Thank you. That's well my done, first ben. loss in this game so far. I know. Ooh. Ben's, Ben's really like, you know, he's, he's killing it. <sighs> you are. Oh, I had a rough patch, like weeks and weeks where <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't fake anybody out, and I couldn't guess anyone's. So I think yeah, I had like a two-month winning streak at one point. <laughs> yeah, that was that was crazy. All right, so stay right where you are. Coming up, Matt, our dedicated millennial internet scout, is going to tell us what we need to be. What Matt on fleek? Uh, yeah, yes, we'll go with that one this week. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so stay right where you are. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box. 
but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your fun weekly podcast about all things digital. And just a quick reminder that we are brought to you by thecurrentnewsletter.com. You have to go to that address, thecurrentnewsletter.com, to sign up. Tech news and tips you can always use, and you get a whole bunch of tech party tricks that you're going to want to pass along to your family members and friends, whether you're in person or if you're doing a virtual call. Sign up right now at thecurrentnewsletter.com. All right, Matt, this is where you take over and tell us all old farts what is going on on the web. We are going to start this week with something that I was very excited about. So this week, uh, Nintendo released on their Switch handheld console um, a expansion for their online gaming system. Um, and this included access to a library of old N64 and Sega Genesis games. Ooh. So if you were around in the 90s, uh, you will remember these two systems. They were some of the first 3D gaming systems um, ever came out with, and they included games like Mario 64 and Zelda Ocarina of Time and uh, 007 Goldeneye. Um, and so all these games have now been released on the Switch, and it was kind of a controversy this week on Twitter because it was originally announced that this would be released on Monday on the 25th, and there was some issues on the back end with Nintendo because they didn't actually set the time. They just said it would be released on Monday. So all day on Twitter, people are saying, why isn't it out? Why isn't it out? And it ended up <laughs> finally dropping at 6 p.m. Pacific time on the Nintendo Switch. So it was just a whole Monday of all the Nintendo fans just kind of throwing a tizzy on Twitter. Yeah, they had nothing else to do. Just to say, when is it coming? Is it I'm going gonna to be here? about it. <laughs> yes. I called in sick today for this, yeah. <laughs> How do they work, Matt? Like, I, Have you played them? Do they work well? I did. I downloaded um, this, the, both of them, the Sega Genesis and the N64. They're called emulators. Um, they're a little clunky. Um, you know, they, the, the controllers aren't super good, and it just doesn't seem like they thought it through very much. It's, it was just announced about a month ago, and it kind of just seems rushed. So I'm sure they'll do something about it eventually, but judging by the way other gaming companies kind of handle issues with their software, it'll be months before it's really fixed. <laughs> Is this free? Wow. Uh, no, <laughs> it is $50 for the year, which isn't Ooh. too bad, but Nintendo fans are complaining that it is too expensive. Um, but in reality, it's less than $5 a month. Um, and you get all these games kind of in perpetuity. So I don't know. It's kind of a, it's a toss up whether or not it's worth it. To me, you but. know what? I'm getting like subscription doubt. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I really feel like it's like, you know, I was looking at our streaming subscriptions and you know, and Barry, you know, you, you always hear me talking about Barry because, you know, you know, this is what he, he does. I mean, he like goes all in on something, whatever it is. I mean, if he wants to learn how to fly a plane, he has three planes and he gets his pilot's license. I mean, he wants to know about ham radio. Oh, my God, you should see the antennas on my roof. Right. Although <laughs> the ham radio is really something because I'll never forget, you know, we were sitting there at dinner and Barry looks at Ian and like he goes, you know, Ian, you ought to learn ham radio and you ought to get your ham radio license. And Ian looks at him and goes, Dad. I got like Snapchat, you know, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. But yeah, so, but you start looking at it. I mean, it's like, you know, we have Hulu, uh, Apple TV, Disney. Um, who else do we have? Netflix. I mean, we have them all. And then all of a sudden, you know what popped up on the credit card bill the other day? The Fox Weather Channel. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> what? That's a charge? <laughs> yes. Why do we need this? It's ridiculous. What do you have next? So you might have heard of this uh, quantum immortality theory that's been going around the internet. Well, there's a new theory that's kind of making its way around TikTok right now, and it's called the killer snail theory. Um, what? It, it's, yeah. So it's it's kind of confusing, but I'll explain it to you as best as I understood it. So 
you are offered immortality and a million dollars, but a hyper-intelligent snail is also allowed that immortality, and he is constantly trying to catch up with you, and if he gets to you, you die. <laughs> so, there's all these theories about how you would go about living your life with this murderous super snail tracking you all <laughs> over the world. So it goes at the same speed of a normal snail. So like, say you 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 go to work and you're working at work for eight hours and right when you get to, you're about to leave, the snail finally arrives at your work and then you get in your car and you go home. Can so you the step whole... on it? <laughs> no, you can't. It's, it's also immortal. So it can't oh. kill you or you can't kill it. It can only kill you. Okay. All right. So that that's part. the only way you can die. So people are, are making fun of it and, and there's all these jokes and theories. Uh, one of the interesting ones that I thought was like, if you go in a spaceship and you go to space, right, and you go to a different planet, and then you FaceTime back to Earth and say, show me the snail, and then they, they show you the snail, you can never be really sure if that's actually the snail or the snail killed that person and it just put a picture of the snail in front of the camera. <laughs> Wow. God. There is such intelligent life on the internet. It oh, astounds yeah. me. <laughs> so is there a theme between, you know, squid dreams, killer snails? <laughs> There's I mean, something. I do there. not think they're the connected. Salamander next? Or, I mean, yes. maybe. maybe. <laughs> All right. We should have some escargot with our calamari. <laughs> we yeah, should. Just to make sure they don't come for us. <laughs> All right, Matt. I, you, know, I, I, you know, I admit I hadn't heard of the killer snail TikTok theory and I feel like I'm, you know, all the better for it now that you shared hey, that with me. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. And what do you have next? So the final thing that I wanted to talk about today was this really interesting thing that NASA is doing. So as you may know, um, NASA had recently uh, landed their new Mars rover on Mars. It was this whole thing with a incredible parachute and a landing with a with the perfectly little put landing in the middle of it, it was a whole thing. So they right when they landed, they started this thing because the Mars rover has dozens of cameras on it. And so it's sending back hundreds of pictures every day. And because there's so many images, the scientists don't have enough time to sift through each individual image looking for important details or anything like that. And so they started having the public take part in going through these images to help build a better uh, artificial intelligence for the rover. So similar to those captures that you do online that get really annoying where it's like, hey, spot the stop sign or where's the crosswalk? Yes. It's that, but on Mars. So oh, it's, so it's wow. you looking through the Mars rover images and saying, hey, that's a rock, that's a shadow, that's a boulder, uh, that's about this big, and it's you're labeling images from Mars to help the AI for the Mars rover be able to better explore the red I planet. I love that. I think that is so great. And so, and so you can go help too if you go to mars.nasa.gov. You can actually participate in uh, these tests. Oh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. You know yeah. what? Are you guys gonna try that? You should try it. Yeah, I'm gonna oh, do it too. That's fun for yeah. sure. Although I hope I don't get the motorcycles because I'm always bad at <laughs> finding those motorcycles. If you awful. see a crosswalk or a motorcycle on Mars, please tell me because yes. that would be very exciting. <laughs> okay, this is a really bad joke about Mars. I'm going to preface that. And if you don't want to laugh, it's okay. I don't want you to feel like, you know, you have to laugh. But what did Mars say to Saturn? What did Mars say to Saturn? Anybody? Give me a okay. ring sometime. <laughs> uh, I know it's bad. All right. Now, this is part of Tech Refresh where Allie, who is our amazing content queen, gives us a little preview and tells us what's going on, what's trending over at commando.com. We have a big one. If you take prescription medications, this story went absolutely nuts on Google. Blood pressure medication that was recalled. It went nuts because this is really important stuff. Um, this is dangerous medicine. So if you or anyone in your family takes blood pressure meds, head to the site how to stop paying for TV. We've got six free apps to help you watch whatever you want. This is really great. And this list contains some that I didn't know about before. And so Kim, like you were saying, if you are sick of paying so much money for all your screen, for, if you're sick of paying so much money for all your streaming subscriptions, you can probably get rid of some with some of these free apps. 
And then we've got a list of the apps that drain your phone's battery and storage the most. So if you have maybe an older phone and you've just got too much stuff going on, your battery's always dying, your apps might be to blame. So we will tell you which ones to get rid of. And then one more little bonus, the 10 most invasive sites on the internet. Bum, Again, bum, bum, bum. Yes. This is, <laughs> this is a list worth looking through, not clickbait. It really is. This is based on what they collect from you, um, what they store, what they give away. So check it out. And I guarantee you that commando.com is not on that list. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> it no. is not on that list. And I also just want to remind everybody that if you're ghosting me on social media, and ghosting means what, Matthew? Uh, to just kind of stop talking to somebody without giving them any kind of explanation why. Yes. So if you're ghosting me on social media and us on social media, why are you doing that? We are amazing. We are fun. We are informative. We are entertaining. And we are your friends. And so come on and join us. Head over to Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. That's Instagram.com slash Kim Commando, where I do want to tell you that I posted a picture of Abby in a diaper and I captioned it. <laughs> I captioned it. It's really hard to look like a ferocious guard dog with a diaper on. <laughs> and I just want to let you know, it's, you know, that time of the year for Abby. Because we were like, oh, is she sick or anything? No, she's fine. But she does have to wear a diaper. Uh, I promise you better photos after that one. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> um, Facebook.com slash Kim Commando. It's really hard to follow that up with a nice segue. And also Twitter.com slash Kim Commando. So if you're not following us, make sure that you always do that. I you want to stay right where you are coming up ben yes our geek of the week is going to be telling us about a new product that he reviewed that let me tell you it's something that i really want so stay right where you are let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app if you've got a business your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers often the messages don't contain all the details you need but what if you were able to get visual information from your callers that's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your show about all things digital. And Ben is our trusty news director and is our gadget guy, our tech guy, and what is it this week? It's a VitaPod drink machine. I will tell you, Ben and Allie and Matthew, that I've been looking at one of these because, you know, I'm really kind of a, a freaky, healthy type of person. And I thought, well, this would be so much better than just, like, drinking water because water gets boring. It does. And, you know, I don't drink enough water. And I know I'm not alone. I mean, Allie, I know you do, but, you know, there's... <laughs> I drink... Like 12 sparkling waters a day. It's probably bad, but... You Do know. you really? Wow. I drink a lot of sparkling water. <laughs> Is there a particular flavor or... Nope. I drink the the Costco brand because it comes in 35 packs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. That, see, that's, that's Matthew's trip to Costco. Toilet paper, paper towels, and sparkling water. That's it. it precisely. Precisely. <laughs> All right. So you got the VitaPod drink machine. Yeah, and it's really supposed to make healthy drinks that you can make at home. Because you go to the store and you have all these quote-unquote healthy drinks, and you don't really always know what's in them. And if you do, if you find the ones that really are, they're usually expensive. So, you know, you get away from this bland, boring water with this brewer, this VitaPod, which claims to make the flavored drinks healthier than water. So they send me this starter kit. It's like a Keurig. A Keurig. It'll, uses pods just like it. So for 200 bucks, you get the machine, a metal 18 ounce bottle, uh, a variety pack of some of the pods. And it has this fancy system built in that filters regular tap water multiple times and then mixes it with the contents of the pod. And it's like crazy fast. Different types of pods, and I don't just mean like flavors. Some are more for nutrition, hydration, you know, with different kinds of electrolytes and 
vitamin varieties and all that. Flavors like watermelon and cotton candy and iced tea. My favorite one is called Energy Plus, and it has, it's, I think the flavor is orange zest, and it also has caffeine. So which, how much caffeine is in it? Is it like, is it a cup of coffee or two cups of coffee? Um, because Allie can attest to this. And this is, I'm asking this for personal reasons. Now, this is not a question <laughs> for anybody who's listening because Allie can attest to this. It was probably about a month ago. I was ordered from Panera and I thought, you know how they always try to upsell you a drink and they, it says, Hey, would you like a latte? And I'm like, you know, I haven't had a latte in forever. I wonder what, you know what? I would love a latte. So I get it. And so, I mean, honest to God, I was like, my brain and my body was moving so fast. It was like, okay, so <laughs> Allie, here's what we're going to do now. And then Allie's like, can you just like slow it down? Just <laughs> no more lattes for Kim. No. So, so how much caffeine is in it? I'm trying to remember. I think it's, I think I read that it was like about basically on par with a, a cup of coffee, but don't okay. quote me on that. All right. Okay. One so of the reasons I like it. Though. They don't all have caffeine though, right? No, no. Just that energy plus. The rest are just like hydration and they're all, you know, vitamins, minerals, things like that. But why I like this one, it's also supposed to boost your metabolism like 50 to 100 calories per day if you just have one of these energy plus drinks. Mm -hmm. And they say you can lose five to 10 pounds a year if you drink one of these every day. Or you can correlate it this way. For everything, every one of these that I drink for a hundred calories, I can have a glass of wine. Yes, <laughs> there you go. I like that math. Well, you have this. Uh, like I said, the machine is two hundred. The pods are are sold in thirty packs that range from thirty five to forty five, depending on the flavor. So it, that comes out to a buck fifteen or a dollar fifty per pod. And so the pros, you know, it tastes good. It really I was just does. gonna and say, does it? How does it, how do they taste? Not the cotton candy, though. I'm not, I'm not messing with that. But, you Ooh, know, the iced good. tea is really good. The orange is good. There's this uh, uh, blueberry, I want to say pomegranate, that some kind of hybrid is really good. Didn't taste like I expected. And as far as the machine goes, it's simple to operate, pretty easy to maintain, uh, easy to, you know, just like a, a cure, how you feel and everything like that. The cons, you know, it's 200 bucks. It's still a lot of money. And it isn't for everyone. If you actually drink a lot of water already, and you like water, then you probably don't need this, and you know, unless you just want something different. But the verdict, as far as if you don't, you know, I like it. My family likes it. Something we're going to keep using. Oh, and that's I also good. Like the, yeah, and the pods are recyclable. The, the company's really big on trying to lessen the amount of plastic bottles making their way into oceans, and so they're trying to make these disposable. They even send you a bag to make it easy to recycle these pods that you can even mail back to them if your local your city doesn't offer a program like that. <clears throat> and so how many Ben heads? One Solid Ben head. Four. four. Oh. oh, that's impressive. That's, you know, right. that is something. So that's the Vitapod drink machine. There's more information and some photos and some good things about it over on the website. But I'll tell you, I took a vitamin supplement in hopes of looking much, much younger. And I have to tell you, it, it didn't work. It did not work. You know, I think, you know, the slogan B12, I think that's, you know, false advertising. <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that one. <laughs> well, that's right. So we're here at the Yanda Tech Refresh. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. And just a quick reminder, hey, sign up for thecurrentnewsletter.com. Just do it now. Come on. And then I can stop bugging you about it. And make sure that you rate, review, you subscribe, you follow to this podcast. And thanks for joining us, Matt, Ben, and Allie. And we'll see you all again here next week. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Wait, what? Add a Robinhood IRA on top, then they'll boost it by 3%. You can do that? And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. Is there a limit to the match? No limit. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC.